it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for a book recommendation video where I talk to you guys about some of my favorite fantasy settings. Hi, it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. So I'm here with a special collaboration style video with some other wonderful booktubers. So I did a video similar to this a couple months back um, due to the lovely Becky from Bex Read who hosted a group of us who did this collaboration style video um, where we all had a specific type of topic and we all dropped our recommendation videos on the same day. So she has brought together another group of us for another type of collaboration video. And this time around we're talking about our favorite settings in books. So before I go ahead and jump into my book recommendations, I wanted to go ahead and give a shout out to all the lovely ladies who are participating in the book collaboration this time around. I'm going to have all of their um, usernames here on the screen for you guys, as well as in the description box so you guys can check out their videos and get some other book recommendations on some different favorite settings. Alright, so when I received the prompt to talk about 5 to 10 books um, from your favorite settings, I didn't know how I was going to approach this collaboration video. Originally my thought was that I was going to pick my favorite setting from each genre and go through those one by one, but as I was starting to make my list, I realized that I actually had a lot of books that fit my favorite setting for fantasy and I figured you know what let's just tailor it all to that. So this is a fantasy um, book recommendation and this one is set on my favorite setting which is actually kind of a cheat because there's a lot of settings. Essentially my favorite fantasy setting is that medieval European style setting but diverse. Make it other cultures. Make it anything but European, okay? Um, so that means that we have Asian-inspired fantasy stories, we have um, African-inspired fantasy stories, we have Latinx-inspired fantasy stories. So I'm going to go ahead and go book by book and share with you guys some of my favorite diverse fantasy reads. So starting off with my African-inspired fantasy reads, um, we have Ray Bearer by Jordan E. Fuego and we have The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. So starting off with Ray Bearer by Jordan E. Fuego, which is a YA fantasy book and the first book in a duology series. So in this story, we're following our main character, Tara Sai, who is competing against other children to be part of the king's new council of trusted um, kind of protectors. And she joins the kind of political factions that are going on with this, as well as a journey to the afterworld. I thought that this book was beautifully written. It's so rich with African culture and mythology and the characters are just fantastic. This was such a breath of fresh air in the YA fantasy world where everything is starting to read the same, so highly recommend this one if you guys are interested to check it out. On the other side of that we have The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin, which is a adult fantasy. This one is inspired by ancient Egypt and this one is also the first book in a duology. This one follows a magic system that involves dreams and dream magic and is a really complicated political storyline. Next up we have the book that I recommend for Latinx inspired fantasy stories, which is Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. So this one has a bit of a Spaniard Latinx inspiration in the historical setting, but it does have a traditional Y fantasy storyline. We have our young female protagonist who is part of this rebel group and they're, thri they're trying to overthrow the government and her co-conspirator slash lover has been captured and she goes in as a spy to get him back. So this one was such a fun book to read. It's also a first book in a duology. So if you guys are interested, go check that one out as well. Moving on to some Indian inspired fantasy stories. I have The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirthala and I have The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. First we have The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is the first book in the Burning Kingdoms trilogy, which is a adult fantasy sapphic um, storyline that is heavily influenced by Indian um, culture and mythology. And this one we're following two female characters. We have Princess Malini and her maidservant Priya, and they're both trying to fight against um, Princess Princess Malini's very tyrant older brother who was trying to take over the world and along the way they form a romance. And on the YA fantasy side we have The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirthala. This one is also the first book in a trilogy and in this one we are following our two main characters Esha and Kunal. Esha is known as the Viper and she is an assassin. Kunal works for the enemy lines as a general son and it 
goes into this whole cat and mouse game as Kunal has to chase after Esha who has been framed for the murder of someone he is close to. Um, so I really like this one because yes it is a traditional fantasy plotline but I love the characters and I love the whole cat and mouse aspect of their relationship and their whole hate to love romance aspect so definitely a fan favorite for me. Next up I have some Middle Eastern inspiration. We have Girl Serpent Thorn and Rebel of the Sands. In this story we're following our main character Amani who is trying to get out of her desert city in the middle of nowhere and so she strikes a deal with another criminal in order to get their way to the capital and a lot happens from there. This one definitely is has a lot of inspiration from um, 1001 Arabian Nights as well as Hindu lore and Navajo myth. I did not know that one. Um, but I really really like this story. It's not on voices but I think that it did a really good job of having still a very diverse cast of characters and it's one of my favorite YA fantasy series of all times. So next up I have a YA fantasy standalone Girl Serpent Thorn by B Melissa Basherdoust and this one is inspired heavily by Persian mythology and we're following our main character Soraya who is a cursed princess and she's trying to get rid of her curse so she can go back into society and so she partners up with a demon in order to figure out how to lift her curse. And there's a wonderful love triangle in this book. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a solid fantasy standalone and I cannot wait to read more from this author. And last but not least, we have some Asian-inspired fantasy stories. Now, Asian-inspired fantasies are some of my favorite, and so I have a bunch, and I narrowed it down to these three to give you guys for book recommendations today. So, it's not a book recommendation video without me pitching The Wolf of Ornyaro by K.S. Veloso, which is the first book in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen trilogy. This is a adult fantasy series that is inspired um, by Filipino culture, and it's your typical grim dark fantasy series where we're following um, our main character who is dubbed the Bitch Queen and she has to try to protect her kingdom while everyone is trying to kill her off and in the meantime assassins are after her from a rival kingdom. Um, all while the fact that she's trying to find her husband that left her and raise her seven-year-old son. So this is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. It is really slow moving and heavy on the characterization, but if you love your dark fantasy, highly recommend this one. Next up, I have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Um, so you guys have seen me pitch this one here and there. Um, this has been a recent favorite of mine. So this one is heavily inspired by Chinese mythology and we're following our main character who is the daughter of the moon goddess and she is trying to find her way through the celestial kingdoms in order to gain favor to free her mother from her imprisonment and you know in that journey she ends up working with the crown prince as well as some other characters in this war that's about to begin so i absolutely love how mystical and whimsical this story is along with the huge Chinese inspiration from this story and the mythology aspect of it so highly recommend this one if you're interested. And last but not least I have one of my favorite Asian inspired fantasy stories and I will also always pitch this one because it is super underrated and more people need to be reading this series. So we have Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dao. So this one is a combination of Chinese and Vietnamese inspiration in this wonderful retelling of Snow White and the Evil Queen and so this is a duology. The first book we're following our main character um, Shi Feng and we're following her villain origin story as the evil queen and then the duology we're following our younger female protagonist who has the Snow White origin story. I absolutely love this duology because I thought that it did the retelling great service. You could definitely see the inspirations for the whole Snow White um, storyline but it, the author really made it her own and I loved her spin and her take on it as well as the Asian setting and background for the story. And it's just a super well-written duology book and highly highly underrated so you guys should definitely check this one out. Alright guys, that's it for now. A short and quick book recommendation video of some of my favorite fantasy settings that have a more diverse 
culture and other inspirations behind it. I hope you guys like this video and maybe found some books that you might be interested in picking up in the future. I hope you do. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have read any of these books already and what were your thoughts. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my video, please give me a likes and a thumbs up, as well as check out all of my other collaborators in the description box down below and get some wonderful recommendations from their videos as well. All right, guys, I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye.